The Challenge USA saw another contestant go in its latest episode. And this time around, it was unfortunately fierce competitor Polly. Polly, thank you so much for joining me. How are you? Uh, I'm great. I'm great. I'm sad to be here, um, but I'm grateful uh, to be speaking with you. Yeah, well, thank you. Okay, so my first question. First of all, I think that this season, people are, um, for followers of the show, I think they were pretty shocked to see um, maybe how much you have changed or grown. So one of my favorite things we see in this episode is, first of all, the conversation towards the beginning of the episode with Tori, where you kind of say that you've been working on a lot of self-discovery the last few years. And at the end of the episode, after you're eliminated, we see you say that you really feel like you had nothing left to prove. So explain all that to me. Yeah, yeah. Um... You know, I, I think there's been a lot of a lot of parts of me that I've that I've kept uh, suppressed. I feel like I've uh, put a lot of walls up, a lot of shields up in order to protect myself. Um, and uh, I think as a competitor, um, you know, you're always working towards, uh, you know, winning and winning at all, winning at all costs. Um, and when, you know, in athletics, like, you know, you're able to play and you're able to do whatever. And like, even if you don't get that win, like people will still give you credit if you're like a good, good player. Right. And in the challenge, um, you know, no matter how well I did, I feel as though the competitors and other challengers, like they almost like they never gave me my roses. And mm -hmm. I feel like that almost like put this chip on my shoulder of like going in and being like, I'm going to prove it. I'm going to prove it. I'm going to prove it to this person. I'm going to prove it to the fans. I'm going to prove it to Prove it to whoever wanted to, it to be proven to. <laughs> to everyone, um, yeah. <laughs> to everyone. And then um, what I really worked on, you know, outside of like being able to talk about, um, you know, everything that I've been suppressing for all these years is getting back to that mindset of like, you don't need a chip on your shoulder to just do it for you, you know, work for you, um, win for you, um, prove it to yourself. Um, so that was like a big uh, journey. And like, I feel like this season – um, you know, although short lived on my, my side of things, like I was able to actually implement the things that I had worked on mm -hmm. in the time off to be like, yep, I'm going to be comfortable enough to have this uh, conversation about like my sexuality and about the growth that I've had and like the work that I've done in my time off. And also I'm going to come in this season playing for me and I'm, and I'm going to take this chip off of my shoulder. Um, and what you saw in that episode was like a culmination of, of all of that, um, you know, to the point where like now. I feel motivated to come in to seasons to, to win and to win the whole thing, um, you know, for myself, mm -hmm. um, you know, not to sit there and be like, I need to stick it to this person and stick it to that person. I need to win because of this and win because of that. Like, no, I want to win. I want to win for me. Um, yeah. you know, and I want to continue to do well for me. Yeah, I think that's awesome. And I just want to say, I think that everything you're saying was very obvious to the viewers and a lot of your castmates, a lot of them made, comments in their confessionals that they feel like they had seen you grow which is really cool but with that i have to ask okay a two-parter what was it like returning to tv after all these years and also what was it like being back in the same house as your former enemies josh and bananas um i mean going back to tv i mean it felt like i it, it felt like home mm -hmm. um you know it felt like i never left um there was a lot of questions you know that i had to ask myself going back like am i ready Am I ready for the, you know, the public, um, you know, to be, to be looking at me just a little bit more? Cause I don't think they ever stopped. Um, do I still have it? Um, you know, and, uh, and how are people going to, um, you know, take to this, this version of me and this side mm -hmm. of me, um, you know, so there was all those nerve wracking things, but as far as like sitting in front of the camera, as far as competing, like, um, you know, I, it felt like home. You know, felt like I never left. Um, and as far as being in the house with Josh and Bananas, um, <laughs> oddly enough, like I, I was prepared for it. Right. So like I, you know, knew what to uh, what to watch out for within myself. And I knew what to watch out for, like in case things went a certain way with them mm -hmm. um, to not allow myself to do. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So. Um, you know, it was, it was interesting. I mean, but I think that that overall played into how we were able to like bury the hatchet. I think being on the same team helped that. I think getting stuck in the same room also helped that. So, um, you know, I'm very grateful for that because I think putting those things in the past, um, is where they need to stay.
Yeah, absolutely. Now, given all of that, you know, this season had such a range and kind of diversity of players as far as like old drama goes, um, different strategic styles, different competition styles, different strengths, whatever you want to say there. So who did you feel like was maybe your closest ally while you were in the game? You know, I, I, I mean, I think at that point I hadn't, I hadn't found a closest ally yet. I think I was, I was setting up the, setting up the chessboard. I was picking up the pieces. I was trying to identify who maybe didn't have a, a, a number one, um, you know, to, to kind of like see where it is. I mean, I knew I was nobody's number one, um, mm -hmm. you know, so I needed to find other people who didn't have number ones. Um, mm -hmm. And, you know, I hadn't truly identified that yet. Uh, I was getting close, um, you know, but it, you know, the hopper got me. <laughs> <laughs> the hopper got you. Okay. So let's talk about that because here's the thing. This is one of like the most, not really crazy, just like I don't bizarre, crazy, whatever you want to call it. Twist I've seen in the last few seasons. So, what do you think of the Hopper twist? Uh, I mean, from a viewer standpoint, I mean, it's got to be great. I hated it. I like, I hated, <laughs> you know, I hated the fact that no matter what kind of game you were playing, like it could get foiled uh, by the Hopper. I mean, because I was sitting pretty good um, at that point. Like, I didn't really have a lot of people looking at me. I think even with this, like. The three boats that I got were more from a strategic standpoint of like, um, we need somebody to take out bananas. And also if, if it doesn't go that way, we're also fine with him going home because he's a good competitor as well. Um, you know, like the hopper just threw a twist in of, you know, it allowed me to let go of control of the game, mm -hmm. which I think also played into, um, my overall experience because normally you go in there and like, you want to try and like, set the pieces up and you try and make these strategic moves and everything. And, you know, you compete, I think being on a team season, you know, it took away, uh, I had to adapt to the game because I wasn't in a position where I've been in the past where like partnered up, I was able to win a lot mm -hmm. as an individual. When it went to individual and war of the worlds one, I was able to win a lot, you know, as a team setting with war of the worlds two, like I had a great team. We had a great cohesiveness. We won a lot. Um, this time around, I wasn't on a team that won, so I had mm -hmm. to adapt um, and I couldn't really play like a crazy strategic game like War of the Worlds 2 because at any point in time, the hopper could have foiled uh, those plans. And because of the secret voting, because of how it went, you didn't know if like people you were talking to was going to take that as a way to be like, oh, I should throw a vote this guy's way. He's, you know, he seems to have his hands in everything. So like I it kind of was one of those things where I was tiptoeing around things. Mm -hmm. seeing where the pieces lied um and it was all because of the hopper like that hopper yeah. was just a, a, a game changer yeah absolutely threw a wrench in all of your plans now we have to get into that elimination <laughs> against bananas so first of all what was it like going against him and secondly would you have preferred something like maybe more physical because i know that's kind of like a strong suit of yours at least in the past yeah i mean listen i would have loved the hopper to pop my name out the uh Prior elimination, you know, uh, <laughs> so that him and I could have had a balls in situation. I think that that would have 100% suited me. I would have been able to uh, win. I would have defected at that point. Um, and, uh, you know, this going into the eliminations, you have to go in with the mindset, um, you know, that that you have to win um, mm -hmm. no matter who you're going against. So, like, I know he's an all time great. I know I've seen a lot of these things before. I even knew going into this that he's done an elimination because he did it against me on final record where he held his arm up for seven hours. So I knew if I was going to win this elimination, I had to bring uh, my A game. Now, the only thing I couldn't factor in was my accuracy on beanbag tosses. Cause you know, <laughs> I think if I, if I nail that last one, it's mine. I also think if the ice melted slower, uh, it's also mine. Cause you know, my arm wasn't dropping. Yeah, absolutely. A lot of different factors that played into that. Okay, now a more personal question for you, because I would yeah. I would uh, define myself as a super fan of the show. So I've been following a lot of storylines for a long time. You and Cara Maria, your girlfriend, you guys meet on the Challenge Final Reckoning. So did you ever think that meeting her on that show and um, you guys kind of, you know, turning into a into a relationship would turn into this long term successful situation that you've had? Um, I mean, I I think, I think I always, I always knew, you know, I knew what my feelings for her were. Um, you know, I think she always knew, she knew what her feelings uh, for me were. I think there was just, once again, there was a lot of turmoil in, in the beginning. Um, you know, I think there was a, a lot of people had a lot of opinions, uh, you know, and at that point, you know, she had done so many seasons back to back to back. Like 
it's hard yeah. to separate what's real from what's fake. Um, you know, she's had a lot of people take advantage of her in the past. She's had a lot of people, you know, use her in the past. Um, and it's tough, like getting into a new relationship, like when people are just constantly telling you that you're not good enough for the person that you're dating um, mm-hmm. and, and that they're using you. Right. Um, so there was a lot of walls that we both had to break down with each other. Um, and then once again, to like keep the relationship successful, um, you have to do a lot of work to it, um, you know, but we put in the work um, and we really, you know, have, have, have stood the test of time. And that just goes to show how much we care about each other. That goes to show like, you know, where, what our feelings were from the beginning mm-hmm. um, and, and that we're willing to like work through anything and stick through anything. And I don't, I, you know, I don't think that we would have it any other way. I mean, I, I wouldn't have it any other way. Um, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, which I think speaks for itself in a lot of ways. And I was recently listening to the Challenge podcast where she also spoke just as highly of you. So I think you guys have a very admirable relationship. Um, my final question for you, Polly, do you think we'll see you again in the future on our screens in the Challenge or maybe some other capacity? Um, I think so. Or sure, I sure hope so. I mean, you guys just got <laughs> a new glimpse into me. Um, you know, so I would love to keep showing you guys a different layer, um, you know, and also like, you know, it's, it's not going to end on that. You know, I need to, I need to win, you know, <laughs> like I can't, I can't, I can't go out, um, you know, this early and then be like, all right guys, well, that's it. Uh, my return was great and you'll never see me again. Um, so yeah. I think you'll be seeing a lot of me. Um, I'm excited to keep growing. I'm excited to keep, uh, you know, focusing on the things that matter and, you know, really shift my focus to, to women, you know, and, yeah. and, and, and just continuing to show you guys like different layers of me. Cause I got a lot of them. Yeah, absolutely. Well, Polly, thank you so much for this conversation. You've been so, so open, so, so vulnerable. It's really been a pleasure. Best of luck to everything going on for you and your future. Thank you so much. I really appreciate it. Thank you for taking the time.